Hey everybody, this is Victor, and this is my tiny eco resort project. Let's check it out. This video is sponsored by Dylan McGaster. Check out our new channel by clicking the link and be sure to subscribe. My little paradise came after my dream for many years. I just wanted to have some cabins, quite small, pushing you to stay outside, enjoy the nature, but also to have like a nice comfort inside the place. The eco resort basically is made of natural materials. We found it around, we pick it up ourselves or use horses or human power, put them in a nice nature place and respect the nature, like be as low environmental impact as possible. I started environmental sciences and my study was like on impact of conventional building materials. So natural buildings is uh, the best solution. The problem is we just need to readapt the technologies that we have today and the way we use them in our buildings. I've been involved a bit in environmental assessment work, I felt that I needed to have like a proper solution. The first step is like informing people, which it wasn't my way to do it. I wanted to have the practical one, but if when you want to present the practical thing, then you need to have so much, you know, work and experience behind it to give it like a good example to the others. So basically this is the first cabin that we started to build. Everything that is in the tiny cabin is just like local materials. It's like wood, stones. Really important thing was like to integrate in the landscape. You know, it's made of natural materials and it fits really good in the nature. I choose to have a green roof. That was the only petroleum thing that we used for waterproof the roof. I really wanted to follow the shape, you know, to go and like into the ground basically to camouflage a bit the cabin. So for that I use like old plastic fruit baskets and I just make like a proper structure to hold it and it works perfectly. We stop the cows to go around here because for them it's super easy just to eat the grass from the roof. So yeah, don't let the cows to eat the, the roof. We use different woods for different purposes. The stairs that we have like in front of the cabin, we use oak wood, which is like the most resilient in the weather. For the rain, sun, like winter and stuff, is the best. That's why the oak grows like more slowly because it's more strong. For the edges, we use like the birch. Somebody wanted to clean his forest, which was invaded by birch trees. The birch is really strong wood. If you take the bark off, it grows like a weed. But then if you work with it, it's gonna have like a you know, super resilient, strong properties. It's a kind of an art to do these shingles. Basically, all of them was like made manually. You need to have like the proper tree for that because if you're gonna have a tree that has like a lot of branches in it, then it's gonna be difficult to get like straight shingles. And then if you don't have straight shingles, then you're gonna have like spaces between it. And then either like the rain will gonna get in or the shingles will crack faster or insects or other kind of Stuff will get in. You need to have a lot of knowledge and experience to do that. Go to an expert. <laughs> this is a really old handler that uh, we found when we clean other places, you know. So this is like a really cool one. Has a lot, lot, lot of history on it. This is also the same project, the same place, which is pretty cool, you know. You just hold, hold this like this and then you can just push it in and you get inside. Everything that we use here, the windows, the glass was like reused, somebody just threw it away and we just reuse it. Over there you can see like the beer bottles. At some point of the day, depends on the season, you get like a nice effect of the green light that's passing through the bottles over there. The bed was made of oak again. Thank you, Donald, my volunteer. He's a really good carpenter. For the mattress, we use like hemp textile and we fit it out with uh, water weed, which grows up here and basically is the most local product that we could have. You know, we just went outside, we walked 20 meters, we cut it with a synth and then we fill up the mattress. You can sleep really good. This is like molding after your shape, basically. We have like an insulation in the floor, a false base, then we have like the wood, we plaster it and then we put the, the floor that you see over here. Going back to the walls, we use birch tree to fill the walls. It has like a wooden structure and we just fit it up with the birch and then we just plaster over it. Basically the clay, took it from a mine that takes stones, but the topsoil, which is like a lot of clay, they just throw it away to build a, you know, ram dirt or a cob house. That's the best place you want to go. The birch we use on the ceiling over here. We wanted to have like an experiment using like the birch as a waterproof insulator for the roof, but it didn't work out because uh, when the birch tree is like green, then you're going to take the bark really easy. 
when you leave it for one day, the bark is gonna be stuck and then you're just gonna need to peel it. And we spent like almost a few weeks doing that. If you work with the surrounding, you could see where the rain comes the most from, the wind, and because of that, you know, the wind comes from that side. And then if you wanna cool out, you just open the window and you have like a natural cooling because of the airflow from there till the door up there, you know, that was really nice. This is the stove. Basically, we took it from the scrapyard. This used to be like a water tank for a water boiling system. And this is like an industrial gas pipe. The doors and everything was made custom. Even like the thermal resistant glass, the air oxygen inlet, everything is like custom made and is perfectly functional. It's absolutely amazing. We made it like these rocket stoves. The air goes inside on this pipe and then it hits like five centimeters below the top over here. So the hot air hits the top and then it goes down over here and then it goes up here. So in this way, we just like keep the hot air more circulated inside the stove. Also like the cylinder inside has like an insulation with a volcanic rock, just pushes the hot air faster to the top. We use like the bricks, you know, around the wall to protect the wooden walls, but also like the bricks just store the heat and then you made a bit of fire and then you had like heated walls and then the heat from the walls gets back inside the cabin over here. We go to see the second one, which is the pyramid cabin. This cabin is like 90% just like natural materials. Everything is absolutely local. We have shingles, we use the birch tree and then we just plaster it. The cabin is just a few years old, but it looks like it's been here for a long time. As on the other side, we use the same like oak for the terrace, birch for the edges, and for this roof, we really wanted to have like a shingle roof to see how it's gonna work in time. That was one of the challenges. Everybody around said if you give like a good angle, they're gonna last more than if you have a like smaller angle. It's like the changes you're gonna see even from one side to another side. You're gonna get more sun from one side, the snow is gonna stay more on the other side. So let's check it out. Because this has like a two-shape roof design, for me it was the big wish to have the inside as a cave effect. So we've done it from plastering and from insulation, which uh, was a, quite of a challenge to do it, but it was really amazing. I'm really happy with it. It's the most basic cabin you can get. Wood, chunk of birch put in together, and then you get a plaster, and then everything is super well insulated and then sealed. Like the plaster is sealing the cabin, and you know, you're gonna have heat retaining really good. The floor we insulated with wood, plastered, we get like another boards of wood and this is it. This was like the only windows that we bought because we need to have custom made for the shape that we have. And I think it was the biggest challenge for the guy from, from the shop, understanding why do I want to buy two pieces of glass, which is like similar, but like not the same measurements. It took us quite a long time to make him understand that we wanted to have it like that so we can fit them over here. The stove was half of the other boiler so we cut it off and then again we've done it. The door also, it's not super straight, but uh, it works really fine. And now we just properly insulate it for, you know, cold time. The shape of the bed over here is not a straight bed. So it was like, again, a challenge to go and find the best piece of wood. I just needed this shape because otherwise if I will open the door and if I had the bed over here, it will just hit the legs all the time of the bed. So that was perfect, you know, it's the perfect line. You just get inside and you have enough space and then the bed goes like that. And then a smaller one for a kid or a person which is not that tall. So now we're gonna check the, the shower and the sauna. We have this perfect situation here where the spring is up the mountain or the water comes down by gravity and we don't need to have electricity. You have just like a wooden boiler and you can just you know, heat it up your water with wood. And then everything that's inside basically is like even made by us or bought from craftsmen. Like the bowl that we have for the sink is a linden bowl, which is a really good tree that is resilient for the water and stuff. The support is made of oak. Everything is made of oak over here, which we like use like linseed oil and wax to protect it and everything works really good. For the shower, I really want to have a material that wouldn't change too much the the theme or the material that is around. I don't really want to have like a skylight. I decided to reuse. So you go to the scrap yard and then you find so many cars that have a trap over there and uh, it's perfect. And let's check it out the sauna. You know, you just relax over here. 
take some steam and enjoy a beautiful sunset. Whew. What a day, what a day. Everything is just basic. Everything like the stove, we just made it. And this is like a volcanic rock. Thank you, nature, for that. Let's go to, you know, one of the best places. This is like a compost toilet. It's just basic. We just keep the shingle design for the toilet. Inside is organic waste that we have. It's just being transformed in a compost with microorganisms. And nature does all the job. Just give it like oxygen, organic stuff that we throw away, heat and humidity. And nature will do the stuff, you know, just go for it. you must convince yourself that you really want to do it. Now it's more easy than ever. You just go online, you use like websites or social media and see what somebody else has done it. It's like, oh, does it look good? How it's gonna feel? And that is like making you hungry about this way of living. That's the first step. When you like reach at the point that you really want to do it, really want to see, experiment how it, it is, volunteer. Volunteer is the best experience you can get and everybody can do it. And then you can say, all right, maybe it's not for me. Maybe it's like, all right, this is it. You know, I feel at home, I feel the right. And afterwards, definitely is gonna be the situation when you're gonna establish your own place. And then it's gonna be, you know, one of the best moments of your life. But also like the, um, the adventure till that point, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. Because it's like totally different than just like to talk about it. And then 10, 10 years later, you think about it. If you try it out, then you will definitely have no regrets that you haven't done it. So, uh, yeah, do it. Try it, you know? Thank you for watching this week's episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you really love what we create here at Floor, we're working hard to bring you more, better, higher quality content. And so if you would like to support us, consider clicking the link in the description and joining the community on Patreon and you can support the channel through that. So if you love what we do, consider checking out our Patreon page and thank you for watching. Have a great week. Big love. Peace out.